Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Wampa Time. My name is Kenny Ngaye, and I am joined by the one, the only, Shimp. <laughs> See, hello. <laughs> so last week we so last week we missed an episode because it was Canada uh, not Canada Day Victoria Canada Day. Day yeah 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 no it's uh, Victoria Woo-hoo! Day uh, we were celebrating uh, in quarantine so uh, <laughs> it was we're still stuck <laughs> we're, Canada has no idea what they're doing we don't know what they're doing no one knows what they're doing but do you know who else doesn't know what they're doing apparently oh. these these Nintendo Switch le- Pro leakers. <laughs> the what? I'm sorry. What's it called? <laughs> the Nintendo Switch Pro, apparently. Oh. So, if you guys don't know, we have been hearing rumors about the Switch Pro for ever. I guess, like since the dawn of time, we've been hearing <laughs> about the Switch Pro. We've been hearing it from sources at IGN. We've been hearing it from sources at um, uh, many. There's some YouTube channels that have like dedicated stories, uh, the almost entire channels on the fact that the Switch Pro is coming. And what it's supposed to be, we'll just quickly say, is basically just a souped up version of the of the Switch. Uh, there's been some rumors that it's going to be able to do upscaled 4K. Um, it's going to yeah, have not native, just like all upscaled. Yeah, yeah, upscaled. Uh, then there's rumors that it's going to run uh, a 720 screen, uh, which because it's running at like a 480 screen now. Up yeah, it's like it, it's like f- well, no, 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 that it's a it's a 720 screen. I seven- thought because when you when it's portable, the game's cap at 720. Then maybe it might be an old. Then uh, it was either OLED 720 or 1080p. I can't remember. I can't remember which one which was. There's so many rumors. Yeah, I, I get them all mixed up. <laughs> it's like where do we go begin? So it was about uh, was it Monday or just earlier this week? There were a bunch of like posters and leakers from Bloomberg from uh, even uh, Centro Pokemon leaks people posting saying okay Switch Pro is coming it's coming today or tomorrow today or tomorrow it's tomorrow tomorrow or tomorrow I swear t- today or tomorrow yeah and we were just like uh, okay earlier from E3 that uh, okay yeah sure I, whatever yeah sure I, I guess and nothing happened <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not like they said today or tomorrow, today or tomorrow. Neither that day nor the next, and <laughs> they were like everyone was saying. I'm sure I 100 percent guarantee that it was a uh, it was an insider at Nintendo pretending to be uh it was someone at Nintendo pretending to be an insider for all these people just to see if uh, how how uh who they could trust or something like that. <laughs> so they so they told them, hey, tell them it's gonna be today or tomorrow. Everyone, today or tomorrow <laughs> Now <laughs> they all look like idiots. <laughs> well yeah, I know exactly. I just I don't understand. I'm I've honestly just lost like confidence at all because and here's the thing. I have been waiting for the Switch Pro because right now my Switch sounds like a wind turbine when you take it out of the uh, the dock. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, really depends. Like, what do you, what are you playing on it? Whatever you hear that. Um, anything. <laughs> anything. Okay. Uh, you might after the podcast, you might want to you might want to mail me your Switch so I can do some maintenance on it. But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the the only time I've heard the the Switches. Um, fan kick on like to high speed were two 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 scenarios one was at work we had two amiibos fighting for my entire 10 hour shift so we, we loaded up smash had two amiibos fight with 99 lives and i went back there and i heard <laughs> and i did it for a week straight and now there's a little burn spot in the screen because it got so hot nice. uh, and then the other one is uh whenever we had all my friends over from work we were playing Team Sonic Racing on the Switch, which is not the most optimized game on the Switch, by the way. <laughs> and we were doing we were doing four player split screen at a oh, game no. that's 30, 30 FPS single player. And four player, it like varies between like ten and two. And uh whenever I turn off the TV, I just hear <laughs> And like we were like, is that what is that? Is that the fridge? No, it's the switch, sorry. <laughs> The switch just screaming for air. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> so yeah, I got a first generation switch like day one switch like right when they released. Me too. Yeah, Same. And, 
it, it's I literally sometimes have to like the fans are sound like they're grinding sometimes. And if I tap it, sometimes the grinding stops. And I'm just like, okay, I, this thing's almost dead. This thing's on on its way out. Uh, you know, I was I was joking before, but I may need to repair your switch for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's rough. It's rough right now. And speaking of rough, oh, Woo! oh, oh man, we got the next subject we're going to talk about. Oh yeah, you're you're news. gonna have fun. You're, you're gonna have fun with this one. Oh, okay, okay. So, if you're a fan of Bio Mutant, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little one. <laughs> All right, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I received a one day early, whew, one day early copy of Bio Mutant. Oh, uh, yours was only a day. Yeah, uh, we got the game at the score. We got the game physical game at the store like five days early for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I wish, I wish, uh, so that I could have made my review. But now I have to make. I still have to make a review about it, and I'm not looking forward to it. But Anyway, so we're playing Di- Bio Mutant, and it is to me, it is rough. It is rough. Um, so run me through it. I know it's like the way my coworker keeps describing it. It's like imagine Monster Hunter, but you play as the cats. No, no. Oh, cool. Okay, so everything no. he's been saying is wrong. <laughs> so imagine a mishmash between. I guess it is trying to be like Breath of the Wild and also trying to be um, aspects of actually, you know, like either like Horizon Zero Dawn. It's very oh. a, a, a open. It's an open world uh, where you find all all these creatures and stuff with hints of little big planet. So it had it's this attempt to try to be original and it's there. It the, the, like before I even begin, it's there. There is a game there. There is. Yeah, yeah, I'm not denying that this is, in fact, a video game. Yeah, this is, in fact, a video game. And there is, in fact, potential there. There is something here. And if there is a mass overhaul from end to end, I think that this game could turn out to be a solid game. However, here is the problem with Biomune. Now, any spoilers that I say... Are just stuff that you discover in the literally literally the first ten minutes of the game, and it's nothing terrible. So, the backstory of the game is the most basic thing ever. So it's literally this: there was a company called Toxidol that poured poison into the ocean, and it <laughs> was radioactive, and it mutated everything, and then the humans uh, just left, and now. All <laughs> the- <laughs> <laughs> just like, the way you describe it, I imagine <laughs> everything is happening right after each other. Like they walk around, uh, they spill it, and then they're like, "Oh Oops. man!" And then they walk away. They get in their cars <laughs> and drive off. And then the, the animals are like, oh, "Okay, well, um, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> do you guys want to like grow legs or something? Or like, what's going on?" <laughs> That's kind of what happens. It's just like it's so obvious too. Like the company's called Toxidol. It's like. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of, and they're pouring poison into the ocean thinking nothing would happen. And then everything happened. And now and, just like, imagine like, man, our trash can's full. What are we going to do? Oh, the water's <laughs> outside. Just go ahead and dump it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. And so what happens is, is that now this is something that really uh, might interest you. It's narrated by the uh, narrator in Little Big Planet. Oh, I didn't know that because I know yeah. that all the characters do like banjo kazooie type thing. Oh no! I oh I oh I wish it was banjo kazooie stuff. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This makes ba- banjo kazooie sound like literature. Okay, <laughs> this makes banjo kazooie <laughs> okay. sound I'll, like <laughs> the w- the way I was told is that it's like banjo kazooie type dialogue, and then the narrator is like, "Oh, since you're too stupid to understand, here's what they're saying." So kind, so imagine banjo kazooie dialogue on crack, um, and imagine the it, every conversation is two times as long because of the fact that 
it's two it's double the length because they sit there so they they're talking it's like <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the narrator is like oh he says that there's something smelly over that hill and that with that smelly thing <laughs> is, yeah that's exactly it it sounds literally like the Tasmanian devil at times and it is absolutely ridiculous and it gets worse. It gets worse. Everybody sounds different. And some of them, some people's VOs actually sound like, like an Aztecian, like clicking. It's like, okay, this is tolerable. And then there's literally a character. His name is best before. Oh yeah. The names are awful. The name. Yeah. These, these, these sound awful. His name is best before. He's literally a, like a mutated sloth with a tail. That's Elvis. He's got glasses, oh, sideburns, oh. and a hair leather jacket. And then when he talks, it's literally... Oh That's my, it. Stop. That's, stop. I am not joking. I am not joking. It's... And I'm just like, I, I just shut up. Just shut you know, up. I've, I haven't seen gameplay until just now because I, I just went to some random gameplay. And this is the most uncanny thing I've ever seen because he's, he's <laughs> running he's running through the four or not the four. He's running through the overworld and everything. And it like I've never seen a game visually look amazing and mm-hmm. then also look like a PS2 game at the same time. <laughs> Like, this is so bizarre to watch. Like, I'm looking at the fur. I'm looking at the grass. It's 4K. It's so beautiful. And then he moves, and it's like, what am I... What is happening? And look at the camera angle, too. The camera sets, like, normally sets on, like... The characters like shoulders, like from their like from the their neck up, like so when they're standing still, oh. the camera, it's like from the neck up. <laughs> oh my god! Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a timestamp. Is is this real? Is this animation real? Uh, for, whenever whenever he smashes it, hold on. Yep. Oh yeah, and also yeah. that 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 character is basically just uh, oh my gosh, yeah, that's animation's real. That that boss is basically just God of War troll. It's just <laughs> the, oh my dude! This looks like a now like okay. It got worse. Now it looks like a mobile game. Yeah. Oh my god! This there, is bad. Are, really? These are the final animations. There are aspects of it. There, there are aspects of Biomutant that are beautiful. Like there are some open world scenes. Like wow, this is really pretty. And then so, but like I said, most of these things for me can be forgiven. What can't be forgiven? Is actually what they blew probably the majority of their budget on, and that's the narration. They, this yeah. guy, literally, they turn around. They're like, "Hey, you know Bastion, that PC game that has a lot of dial like narration and that story, nothing but narration." Yeah, yeah. Imagine that, but it have it be useless information. Like you're literally walking around, and all you're hearing is, "Oh, would you look at that? There's smoke among," and he says it in such weird ways, like unnecessarily weird, like, "Oh." Look at that smoke. Remember what your mother always said. Smoke equals villains. And you're like, what? Okay. Uh, I can see that there's smoke and I'm going to go there anyways. So please stop telling me that there's smoke because I see the smoke. Yeah. And and, and there's (laughs) exposition on everything. Everything. Uh, uh, I'm also noticing there's like a Fortnite HUD. (laughs) Oh, and that's what kills me is that literally I'm having conversations with characters that literally take like like 10 minutes just to get through a simple conversation like a fetch quest it's like and i'm sitting there and i'm mashing a and i'm like and you just you hear gibberish then the narrator and the narrator is making comments about what they're saying too he goes oh he also said something that's kind of rude too, but we're, I'm not. Gonna oh, he that. said something like epic. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, can we just like? I would rather deal with the gibberish and just read the subtitles. And yeah, honestly, it. yeah. What? Why go through the effort of like paying all these actors to go? And if you're just gonna talk over them. Yeah, exactly. And not just that too. Here's the thing: is that there's a morality aspect to it. So like, there are set choices to be like oh are you gonna choose the good side or are you gonna choose the bad side and then 
they they always like talk to you like they're always like oh i remember you and they always say the weirdest things that goes i see a spark of light in you so i because i see that spark of light in, in you i trust you it's like we just met 12 seconds ago <laughs> <laughs> listen i don't even know your name <laughs> <laughs> we just met and so but here's the thing is that the evil side and the good side are voiced over and they're english and they speak fluent english and everything is fine is it the best vo no but it doesn't matter because it's tolerable to listen to so i'm like why are yeah. you paying act is like take the money that you put towards the uh the, the little big planet guy take all that money cut it in half and divvy it up to a bunch of small vo uh voice actors and let them voice like a page of lines right even if you're like yeah. hey listen we want entry level VO. Like, listen, we want entry level VOs. If you want a credit in a game, uh, we'll pay you 150 bucks to read a page of dialogue, and done. And <laughs> that's that, it. Yeah. Then you have a credit in a game, and you have VO that's half decent, it, right? And then you can turn around and be like, okay, he, we have a bunch of people sign it. We'll let them know we might not even use their dialogue, but hey, if they if it is used, we'll give them a credit, and then they can use that as a credit towards their promo reel and stuff. And now you're actually giving people an opportunity for jobs, right? You're giving people like, hey, we're going to give you something small so you have something on your demo reel. Something something like that. Yeah, just anything. <laughs> not not uh, eco like 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 uh, Like I said, it literally Banjo-Kazooie is better because, you know, it, oh, oh, it is so painful, and the last thing before we move on to the thing that you told me about is that there is a game here. There is yeah, it's a there. game here. There is something there. And that's what hurts the most because it is surrounded by exposition. There were people leaving my stream because we were in conversations that lasted so long. Like there are people like, I'm out. This, this, this conversation is so long. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's killing me. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I understand. I, I don't blame you for leaving the stream. I don't blame you whatsoever. I understand. We like we, I was having a conversation with a uh, a blind, uh, 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 not a badger, but a blind uh, uh, what, what <laughs> something, things? something, some mammal that digs under the ground. I can't remember uh, a mole. Yeah, mole, mm -hmm, a blind mm -hmm. mole for like 15 minutes and him just giving exposition on something that I just couldn't care less about. I could not care less about. And of course, yeah, there's bugs and glitches too, which that that's not even my biggest problem. Hey, my, that's the fun part. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the fun ones. Yeah. So when you actually get the combat though, the combat is actually kind of fun. It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, the character creation is uh, stuff of nightmares. Uh, it is. Actually, oh, nice. <laughs> it is actually like absolutely horrible. Like give me, Give me one second here. We create when we <laughs> I have to show you. So one of the character, uh, you get to choose a character class and there's a character class called commando. And it's literally, oh. it's literally like you have a gun and you it's, you have a gun on the back of your shoulders and you have like bullet things around you. And we created this character and we so aptly named it scrambo. <laughs> we call we, we named him Scrambo, and we were just wheezing when we were making Scrambo. <laughs> like, hold on, let me get a picture here. Well, I, hold on, if you I, guys like, in the stream, I saw that there, like, because in the gameplay that I saw, I saw that like every time he shot, it would have a comic book like clank, 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 and it yeah. like looked like Sly Cooper too. So it looks yeah. like. It looks like five different design artists worked on this game and they couldn't agree on something, so they just put everything into it that <laughs> make it look like five different games. Hey, I just said it here, Scrambo. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my dear God. <laughs> that is the worst thing I have ever seen. And what's the, the big oh the, my, the best dude? Part. The best part is that he has the worst underbite. Like that's an overbite. Like it's so bad. <laughs> oh, so you like, stretched his you stretched his face out? Oh no, I didn't mean to. I hit randomize and I came up with this face. I'm like, yes, yes, scrambo, is, <laughs> scrambo <laughs> is now scrambo. 
That is repulsive to look at. Oh my lord. You know, I would have been better off in my day and life if I had just never seen this image. Good lord. Oh, Scrambo. So it's a cross That's between disc- it's a cross between Rambo and Scrat from Ice Age. <laughs> oh no! I see both. <laughs> so he calls him Scrambo. Uh, it makes it it makes it way better that he has a just a blindfold on. <laughs> All oh, right, that, that's, so good. that's disgusting. I'm gonna post this later on Twitter and just do hashtag Wumpa Time hashtag Scrambo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh so my let's god, go, that. So- that that I I I hate that. I just absolutely hate that. <laughs> you can't stop looking at it. Oh, oh, that that I would have been better if I I just would have been better if if that did not just pop up. Um, it's made your life better. Trust me. Speaking of popping up, ooh, remember tr- remember uh uh Dying Light Two? No, remember that. No. No, me neither. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so main news. No. <laughs> so, Dying Light 2 was announced in like 2018, and then it just kind of... <gasps> just... And everyone's like, did, did anyone see that cloud of dust? Was that Dying Light 2? <laughs> and that's it. It just disappeared. The whole the whole game just was like, hey, you know, I'm just going to take a break. And then <laughs> yesterday, or the day before, during the Sonic event, uh, it would have been... Uh, I think the publisher yeah techland they were mm-hmm. like hey wouldn't it be funny if uh it came out like in december and everyone was like uh, what <laughs> do, uh, do you do you have a game ready and they're like yeah here's the game so dying light 2 just showed up <laughs> Shut like up. It, it, it just came late to the party like hey guys uh how, is everyone is everyone doing good um I didn't play the first one. All I know is that the second one was in like development hell for a while. Obviously, and uh, <laughs> people were just waiting. Like, are there is there any news? And the publisher was like, eh, you know, uh, what, what made it more bizarre is I think I just read that Square Enix was supposed to publish it, and Square Enix was like, dude, I don't know. Like, I asked them for their homework like a year ago, and they still haven't turned it in. <laughs> so. The main thing I wanted to bring up, just very, very, very quickly, just because, you know, we, we've talked about this stuff. Um, they released, like, a a quick, like, five-second little video shot of the Collector's Edition of Dying oh, Light no. 2. Oh, and no. you know how we harped on the Resident Evil 8 one for giving you, like, four things for $230? No, don't tell me the bar's been set lower. Uh, a little bit. Like, not by <laughs> a lot, but it's still there. So... Okay, rule of thumb for all collector's editions, I do not count the box or the game as a selling point. That should be a given. (laughs) I don't need you to tell me, like, it comes with a box? Oh my god! (laughs) It comes with a box that houses the game. No No way, dude! (laughs) Shut up. Stop it! Stop it! Alright, so, without without, uh, counting the box or the game uh what you get oh oh what you get is uh a statue that it you know it's plastic you know it, it like it has a hollow base okay. i'm going to send you a picture of it okay actually no i'm not i want i'm going to surprise you okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a statue of someone hitting a zombie and uh it, it lights up it has like a uv light it's neat okay and it has a a big a big base that just looks like a road and obviously the road is hollow like it okay. like it's just gonna be if you've seen the sonic mania collector's edition where the genesis he's standing on is just a hollow piece of plastic it's that okay um you get um stickers uh you get uh, a art book uh you get a map and you also get a flashlight and oh, that's the that, new one. <laughs> that can all be yours for $230. Uh, uh, so for 230 bucks, I could get the same result if I go down the street to Dollar General and I get a UV flashlight, right? <laughs> and I put a Dying Light 2 sticker on it. And then I'm like, God. bro, yeah, I'm elite. I got the expensive one. So <laughs> here's what it looks like. 
And the big selling point is that if you shine the UV light on the stickers, you can see another design. Or if you shine it on the statue, who you get, has a UV uh, light to just? Hey, look! Look at this! Look at this! Look! 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 Whoa! 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 Yeah, man, I got my UV light from that deluxe uh, collector's edition that I got. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of uh, cool. Is it the worst collector's edition for price, though? Mm, no. Not, no, no, I still think I, that well, goes to... Mm. I think that still goes to Battle for Bikini Bottom. Battle for Bikini... Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting the fun edition was $300. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But fun edition compared to the RE8 collector's... Like RE8 was like 230 and you got you got like three things, right? Yeah. Like uh, they're both pretty bad. Like this is like this is pretty bad. Yeah, this is like this isn't not the the wor- I mean it's, it's definitely not the, you know, it's definitely not mid-tier. It's definitely low lower tier. Yeah, th- this is like something mm. you would get from limited run where they pack like the same things with like all their other collectors right. editions. So what what are they retailing the game at because right now uh the games retailing uh, for cross generation are up and down and all over the place. Is it 59 or 69? Uh it just says uh retail editions soon available. Uh let me see. <laughs> so they haven't given us a price yet. <laughs> No, well, that's so. on the actual. That's on the actual website. Let me see how much it is on like Xbox. Like, like Xbox. Yeah, Xbox. Tell, yeah, tell me, tell me how much it is, or don't, or <laughs> maybe uh, pre-order now. Uh, it's sixty for the standard, eighty for the deluxe, a uh, hundred for the ultimate edition. What do uh, you? It's are, a, wh- are, are they separating this into different editions again? Three different editions. Why? Wait, the deluxe edition, eighty bucks. You get three outfit. You get three skins, and then wait. Access to a story DLC will be available in the months after the release. Okay, do you get all that included with the collector's edition? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, retail pre-order collectors. Uh, yes, you get the story DLC, digital items. And uh, that's it. it, it I don't okay. think I don't I don't think like oh if you buy the hundred dollar ultimate edition you get an extra slot in your inventory that's kind of cool right that no. No, 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 it's not. No, that should just be given. Like that should just be part of the game. That should just be part of the game. Like uh, Days Gone did something kind of like that. It wasn't as bad, or was it Days Gone? I can't remember which one it was. Where it was like, hey, you start off with three ability points instead of zero, and it's just like it allows you to be more overpowered early game. It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, dude, can I just play the video game? Like, yeah, do like, I have it, to? Like that one left have to a, pay to cheat. That one kind of left a sour taste in my mouth because it's kind of like, well, you're giving me an advantage right away. But I mean, it's not the worst. But then just putting an entire mechanic like inventory slot in there. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, dude, dude, come, come on. on, come on, man. Like you're like, really. I don't want to. I don't want to pay for a cheat code. You know what you're, I'm saying? You're really <laughs> trying to splice this game up as much as possible, and that's we can all see that. Uh, speaking of speaking not of all, that, <laughs> I was gonna say speaking of everyone seeing it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Uh, if you guys don't know, we had Sonic Central. Sonic! <laughs> Sonic! Now, this is very much Shem's wheelhouse. This is this is Shem's Woo-hoo! wheelhouse, his temple, his place of origin. Please, this let is... me open your third eye real fast. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we had Sonic Central, and which is basically the, a Sonic Direct, I guess, would be the... Yeah, the, like, the Sonic Central China? was... Uh, like it was a website back in the day like in 2006 or so uh where you would go to watch trailers and uh that's when sonic 06 was announced and you'd go back there and watch trailers for that and like sonic rush and play flash games and all that stuff and it it was neat to see them use it again but it it just kind of came out of nowhere like hey guys uh tune in uh, two days from now and you'll see like everything and we were like okay cool um but it, it was really cool because, like, for me personally, uh, all, all these games have been coming out, and I've just been like, neat, cool. Okay, cool, yeah, I'll try that one. And now I actually have something to look forward to, uh, <laughs> which is just, like, 
even if it is the same game, which I should start with, uh, Sonic Colors is getting an Ultimate Edition, meaning right. a, uh, a full remaster. And um, at first, I was like, okay, cool, yeah, you know, Sonic Colors is one of the, it's one of the only few recent Sonic games that had a really high Metacritic score, so it makes sense for them to just remaster it since it scored well in the first place. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's they're doing a lot more than I thought because I thought it was just a port with like better assets like with the new hedgehog engine but uh Mm -hmm. i have uh, most of my friends in the sonic modding community they think it got ported to unreal huh which 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 is very bizarre to think about yeah but they think they think sonic colors was ported to unreal 4 because one there's a lot of effects going on in the game that the hedgehog engine apparently can't do like tone mapping and uh Mm -hmm. uh, i think it was like something with the the lighting effects i can't remember uh but also it is you can only buy it on pc through the epic game store hmm which i which really threw me off because every other sonic game is on steam yeah so it was very bizarre to see it only on epic i assume for like maybe a year or so Mm -hmm. um but with sonic colors ultimate i noticed that i mean a lot of people noticed that one his i don't know if you saw this because did you watch the event I did, I did, yes. Or, okay. So, I'm not sure if you remember, saw this in the trailer, but during the Sonic Colors trailer, uh, his gloves and shoes were changing colors, like, every time they would show new gameplay. Uh, like, whenever he's running through the first level, his shoes uh, and glove are, like, a reflective silver with, like, a black seam, and then the on- the other color that I saw was yellow, where he had yellow mm-hmm. shoes and yellow gloves, and they were, like, glowing and metallic or something like that. I did notice and- one scene that I didn't notice one scene where the shoes were, like, almost, like, silvery white, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, that- that's what I was referring to, and it's very... It's... I don't know if it's, like... I thought it was, like... Uh, power up specific like whenever he gets one of those little wisp power ups and his his shoes change but right. they they were it was only those two colors when it showed all of the other wisps and um the the bloom and the lighting looks like really really good and yeah. i'm wondering if <clears throat> they uh i'm wondering if they redid the cutscenes cuz remember this is a Wii game yeah. so all of those pre-rendered cutscenes were pre-rendered at like 480p yeah no, so I they would, look i, I would it, hope it, I if you hope. play it on Dolphin and you upscale to 4K, those cutscenes are crunchy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can <laughs> count the pixels. Yeah. I, I certainly hope that they definitely did that. No, I do agree that like um I do agree looking at the Sonic looking at the Sonic Colors trailer. I never played Sonic Colors. Uh that was a game that I kind of was thinking about. It was always a game that I was like, yeah, I'll play that later, and then never got to it. It was Yeah, and that's understandable. Yeah, it was like, you know, uh, for me, I got spur- I, I kind of fell out of Sonic for a bit because I kept getting spurned. Uh, the last Sonic game I remember buying that uh, a Sonic Generations was another game I kept putting on the back burner too. was Sonic and the Secret Rings. For the week. Oh, you you poor thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh uh, was... no, dude, I love Temple Run. <laughs> <laughs> you see, yeah, I I very I very vividly remember playing this. Uh, vividly uh, remember playing this in my parents' basement. Uh, we had ordered chicken Swiss chalet, and I was playing it, and I was eating, and I was playing it, and I was just sitting there, and I was just like, "When's this gonna get good?" Um, <laughs> I I was, I, but I was always a kid that would like it. Whenever my mother rented me something, I would play it. Doesn't or, or if I rented something, I always felt bad if I didn't like it because you know my mom paid for it and I didn't. Yeah, I, you know I'm like ten, so I. <laughs> so you had to force yourself to like it. Oh, I forced myself to play it as much as I could, and it got to a point where I just did homework over like <laughs> the secret. <laughs> I just that is that is the greatest thing I've ever heard about that game. <laughs> like I could continue playing this game, or I could do mind-numbing homework. I think I'll choose homework. Yeah, but dude, you didn't you didn't play it enough because you can unlock an ability that gives you better controls. Oh goody! I'm yeah, happy. The description <laughs> is you can control Sonic better. <laughs> goody. No, it's just like no. As I was that that was the last one that I purchase and bought uh it's not the last one that i played i've i've borrowed some games i've tried a few um 
I tried uh, uh, Sonic Generations on PlayStation Now, and uh, I liked it, but I didn't want to play it on PlayStation Now. Um, yeah, I'm surprised you played it on Now. Like that That's like OG thing. That's like a, some OG PlayStation stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what I, I, I might do is, uh, now that I have my backwards compatible PS3, I might actually go get a copy of the game, because that came out for the 360 and PS3, right? Yeah, but it's also yeah. on PC. Uh, is it and on PC? It usually... Yeah, uh, that's where all the mods come in. That, well, that's what I'm, my most popular video is. That Oh, that's right. Generations is on PC. You know what? I'm going to... Uh, I will probably get it for PC then and just, you know, try it there and I might it, stream it. It usually goes on sale for like a dollar on Steam. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, whenever they did their big... Whenever they did their big, like, summer sale or something, Generations was a dollar and Sega reported, yeah, um... Here, here are all the top three Sonic games in 2020 that sold the most. Team Sonic, Sonic Mania, Generations. And I was like, oh, what? Gen- again? Generations? Top three? <laughs> again. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, when it's up for a buck, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. My, you might as well. Yeah. Um, But after the Sonic Colors... Oh, with the Sonic Colors, uh, I think it's just the first run. If you buy it uh, on its first run, you get a, a big, like box with the game in a, a baby movie sonic keychain and um i think my reaction to everyone else's reaction was like oh okay Yay. thanks yeah. now <laughs> did, did you did see you? that the the, the key yeah, the, those bloody keychains <laughs> like yeah look at these diamonds <laughs> these diamond <laughs> yes keychains. yes okay we'll, we'll, we'll get to that we'll, don't, we'll get to that don't okay, worry we'll get to that um <laughs> Uh, but I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw the tweet that I retweeted, <clears throat> but someone pointed out that um, uh, it was an unintentional throwback because when Sonic Colors came out on the Wii, if you pre-ordered it at EB Games, uh, you got a uh, a Sonic hat. But it was uh, in. It was a Sonic hat that everyone had, and they did that because they had a massive amount of overstock. And I think this is the same thing with this baby movie Sonic keychain, because <laughs> they had so many of them after the movie that they were like, just put them with the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but it, it's good to see Sonic Colors keeping the tradition of releasing with overstock. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but let's let's talk about so so. But I am interested about Sonic. I am very interested about Sonic Colors because. I never played the first one, so I might pick up Sonic Colors. But what is going on with um, what is going on with uh, you know uh, that uh, that that end bit there? What's what's going on there? Oh yeah, the game that they so <laughs> new, uh, at the very end they're like, oh here's our uh, new game that we're gonna tease. Oh he's running through the forest. Well what could it be? We'll tell you later, and then. Everyone knew everything about it within the hour. Yeah. Like, I am not exaggerating. It, like, it was this. It, I don't think I have ever seen a game leak as fast as this one. But I, the- <laughs> I, I think I think this is the world record for uh, like the Internet knowing everything about a game within the hour of it being announced. <laughs> yeah, which is really weird because like. It, it's funny because the game leaked before anybody knew it leaked. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it was at like it was in 2020 when all of this was on, and everyone's like, "Hi, yeah, whatever." It's just another 4chan post, and then it started like lining up, and everyone was like, "Oh no, yeah, oh, this is the whole game." Yeah. So I think my favorite thing is well, like first off, we knew about the name. The name uh, we got f- was because a 4K version of the trailer leaked online, where you could just download it and watch the trailer again, but right. in 4K. And if you looked at the hex code or the source code. Yep. There are multiple references to Sonic underscore Rangers. And everyone's yeah. like, okay, maybe that's the project name or maybe that's just the name of the game. Um, and then if you go to Polygon, you know, a credible source for video game <laughs> news and everything. Uh, and they they posted about the game saying, oh, it's Sega teases new Sonic game. And they posted a screenshot that Sega gave them where it's like him running in the forest. And if you open, the f- if you open that picture, yeah, PR, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. If you right click and open picture in new tab and you look at the URL, and you know, it says blank, blank, blank dot PNG. This one just said Sonic underscore Rangers dot PNG. Uh... And <laughs> we were like, huh. And then... Sega, uh, Sega accidentally referenced a press kit that was leaked that mentions Sonic Rangers. 
So Oof. the game is called Sonic Rangers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want everyone to know it's called Sonic Rangers. Yeah. Um, Unless they decide to change it internally. <laughs> yeah, they were just like, oh, you know what? It'd be funny if we just change it like right now, just to throw them all off. <laughs> I mean, they might. <laughs> so, so with the 4chan leaks that we uh, mentioned, uh, there were some people who got uh, allegedly got to play test this game in 2020 when it was like in very early alpha, I assume. Yeah. And from what we know, it's an open world style Sonic RPG question mark. Right. Where uh, it's very Breath of the Wild inspired. Uh, and there is like combat, but there's still boost and all the shrines, for example. I yeah. think they said that all the shrines are going to be unleashed slash generation style levels, which are the best part of the game. And every mm-hmm. every single leaker who who leaked about this said uh, consistently one Sonic Rangers unleashed style levels and mm-hmm. the music slaps. They always said the music <laughs> slaps and that's what I'm most excited for. Uh, but I've had some time to think about this and mm. I am personally uh, optimistic about this because right. I think it's time that Sonic did something different that wasn't so stupid. Like when Sonic <laughs> did something different in the early two thousands, he had a sword yeah. and it talked and then he was a werehog, and then he had a hoverboard, but with the Kinect camera. Like, that's the bad kind of different. Yeah. With something like this, Forces was bad because it was it was Sonic Lost World again, but they tried to emulate what Generations did because it's not the same team. Right. So they just, they just kind of went like, oh, if it boosts, then it's the same game, and it was just really, really bad. Uh, this is an open world game. Sonic game and uh, like imagine Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing with Breath of the Wild that people complain about is that it took so long to get anywhere right so imagine if it was just like all right I have to go on the other side of the world and you just boost there and on your way you fly through a bunch of enemies because you're boosting as fast as you can right and then you fight you fight you quickly fight like a cluster real quick and then you boost back and it's like just really really uh really quick really fast Yeah, um, but I think the main complaint from the leakers is that the combat was very button mashy. You know, you mash X to win, yeah. uh, which is understandable because you know it's Sonic, so I mean, it's yeah. whatever. But I'm gonna have to wait to see more about this. But yeah. I don't mind this. What did you think when you saw it? So when I first saw the trailer, and I was like, "Oh, that's it." Um, I was kind of like, all right, well, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. So my overall thoughts are just overall the Sonic Central in general. Uh, I thought it was okay. Um, yeah, same. It was well, okay. It wasn't the uh, definitely not the worst thing. Definitely not the best. It was like, all right, you, you did good. You did all right. You did okay. So, uh, and that's coming from someone who's kind of like, not necessarily like not a fan of Sonic. I am a fan of Sonic. Um, I, I'm just not a diehard fan of Sonic. So, um, yeah, but seeing seeing it, I was like, okay, that that's pretty cool. Um, now the whole idea, now talking about Sonic Rangers and talking about all that kind of stuff, is something where I'm I'm mixed about it. I'm mixed about it, and I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb right now, where people are comparing it to Breath of the Wild and comparing it to. So the first thing that I want to talk about is I'm so sick and tired of open world with shrines and paragliding equals. Breath of the Wild. There are yeah. many games that have int- introduced paragliding in an open world format way, way before Breath of the Wild. Did Breath of the Wild do it on a bigger scale? Of course. But I think of like Sly Cooper, right? Where he literally had the parachute and he could just zip around the level. And if he got to a high point, he can go wherever he wanted, right? Um, I think <clears throat> of... Uh, there was uh, an Assassin's Creed for PSP that had a paragliding and a massive open world scale. Man, that's a throwback. That's a throwback. That's <laughs> that, what I mean. That, I have not thought of that in a hot minute. Yeah, I know. But you get what I mean, right? So I and yeah. this is coming from someone who really enjoyed Breath of the Wild, who beat the story and the DLC and everything. I enjoyed Breath of the Wild, but I'm sick and tired of people turning around saying, oh, it's like Breath of the Wild. The... The only game that I would turn around and say, oh, it is like Breath of the Wild would be like Immortals Phoenix Rising. I mean, that is a... a Yeah, that is Breath of the Wild. (laughs) Yeah, that is Ubisoft's Breath of the Wild, and I agree. I 100% agree with that, and, you know, that that is something that is very... So when people turn around and they include paragliding, 
open world format shrines, it's immediately Breath of the Wild. It's like, no, it's a combination of mechanics that have been used across the gaming industry for decades, right? So yeah. these are these are all mechanics done a certain way that are different. Just because Zelda did it doesn't mean that that's what everyone refers to now because there are much smaller and other games that are similar in size that have been able in, in, in similar in size of scope at the time of its release. That was like breath of the wild. So, so first thing is that, so I, I like the idea of it being open. The idea of, I like just keeping it with what it is an open world. Sonic game. doesn't mean breath of the wild, Sonic, just Sonic, right? Uh, open yeah. world Sonic. I, when you take 3D platformers and you turn them into a open world, because that that's Sonic kind of flips between Sonic is a weird genre when it comes to platformers because it flips between being a 2D platformer and a 3D platformer, right? Yeah, yeah, and that was the big complaint with Sonic Colors is after after Unleashed, it was a it was a mainly 3D game and people liked that, and then Colors came out and played it safe and primarily did 2d like there were it like um, if unleashed was a 3d game with 2d sections colors was a 2d game with some 3d sections right right and when you, whenever you sonic is a very 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 weird one so uh just like how spyro you couldn't put spyro in 2d space you can't do that crash crash is a weird one because he's never really been 2d he's always been 2.5d it's almost like donkey kong country with a different camera perspective oh uh, are you are you referring to the gba games uh no i'm referring to um like crash band like just the mainline console games for crash Bandicoot. yeah because i played i played crash gba and i was actually yeah. very surprised by how well he tra- he transitioned into 2d yeah it didn't help that the level design was just very bland oh but, yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, well, i'm just referring to like the, the mainline console games so, but you could put Crash in the 2D. Yeah, you could put Crash in the 2D. But normally, he, he keep, keeps the 2.5D. Crash has gone 3D and to mixed results. Um, some people say that that is the apex of Crash Bandicoot. Others say it's the worst aspect of Crash Bandicoot. It's a very touchy subject, um, depending on who you ask. Um, it, it, when you talk about Twin Sanity, some people leap for joy and say it's the best Crash ever. Others groan, say it's the worst Crash. Um and then you talk about Mind Over Mutant, Crash of the Titans, etc. So you get lots of mixed reactions. Um, so, but Sonic is unique because it can flip flop. You can have Sonic games that are 2D and then other Sonic games that are 3D and they're both decent. They're both good. Like it works. That's what I mean. Like it works for thematically. Because if you were Regardless to. Regardless if it's 2D or 3D, you're going fast. Right, exactly. And that's, that's something that's really, really unique about Sonic is uh you get these three is that you get these games that can flip flop between 2d and 3d 2d and 3d and it still is co- i guess like staying on theme with the character and staying on theme with the whole franchise so a sonic open world this is where i get i say hmm because sometimes i i love the idea of the shrine still being like levels I like that. I do like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it breaks it up from the open world aspect and gets right. you more to like the gameplay that you're expecting or used to or want. Yeah. And I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, but this was also a problem that I had with there, there's there's a problem with some games where there's such thing as too much open world. Right. Yeah. It's uh, yes. It's open. so oversaturated that like I've gotten I've told multiple people I am so tired of open world games because to me they all feel the same. They're all just kind of clashing together because that's all I like. Like when I think of an open world game, I think of the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 doing these exploring, exploring, exploring. Sometimes you just want to get in the story. Like, for example, uh, kind of weird to refer back to this, but like I'm playing right now the Mass Effect trilogy. Right. Yeah. And it's open enough, but it's not complete open world and it's very structured. And I'm enjoying that. And I'm enjoying that again because it's just like, OK, you finish this mission, you get dropped in, you go from point A to point B to point C story dialogue D E, and then you finish the mission. Right. And yeah, it's very much you go here, you go to here, you go to there, you go to here. There's some side channels where there might be, oh, you could go over here and start a bonus aspect to this mission. Or, hey, if you find this secret area, you can get an extra weapon or whatever. Right. And but it's not 
this gigantic open space. And I feel like that we, like you, I agree with you that there has been all these generic open world games that open world is no longer a selling point. Because remember, that used to be a big selling point was yeah. 3D open world. You're like, wow, the possibilities are limitless. And you that's, know, the, the Dark Souls thing of, you see that mountain? You can go there. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. Is that like, it's this whole 3D open world is like amazing but then what happens is is that i would prefer a smaller structured game now compared to an open world now i'm not saying keep it completely like you know tight and you know clamped together but i i think of something like spyro you know like spyro is 3d yeah. but it's not open world it there's space to move there's places to go secrets to find but it's not a gigantic uh, because it feels like there, this, there are sections and this is, uh, this is the point I'm getting to is that it feels like the game is created into sections of certain levels and then they just throw it all on the map and then they just throw baloney all in between. It's just, okay, yeah. we're just, that's <laughs> yeah. it. That's it. And it's just like, and it feels like when you get to a point, there's not a sense of completion. There's not a sense. It's like, okay, you did it. Now it's just on to the next thing. And <laughs> it, it, while it's like that with every other game, there's a fanfare. There's a like, you know, hey, you completed this section. You completed this level. You completed this. It's 100 percent. Now move on to the next chunk of the level that looks completely different now. Right. And yeah, I like, like, for example, with Breath of the Wild, you I got I started to uh, there's a lot of nice, diverse environments in Breath, Breath of the Wild. But you start to get sick of being in the same area over and over mm -hmm. and over and over yes. again. Yes. Yes. And, and th that's something that frustrates me. And it, it it's absolutely just, it's painful to be in the same, to be in the same areas. I love diverse levels. Like I, that's why I love Spiral. That's why I love Crash. That you're in a level for five minutes and then you're on to a new level and it's completely thematically completely different something yeah yeah uh, you know like crash warped you at one point you're in the great wall of china and then the next you're on a beach and after the beach you're in a, a, a castle village it, it's boom 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 it's different stuff open world game has the tendency of just being stagnant and stale in the same area do you know what i mean yeah exactly yeah and i'm scared that's what's going to happen with sonic central i'm uh, not sonic central with sonic rangers i'm scared of that i don't I don't want that to happen. I don't want that stagnant feeling to happen. I like I, I, I can tell you right now, the only thing that we as Sonic fans hope is that it's just good. Like, yeah, no, that's I, the just ultimate please thing. Yeah. be good. Yeah, that's the ultimate thing. Um, is, is it good? Yeah. And uh, there were a lot of other Sonic stuff announced, but uh, mm -hmm. Those are uh, the that, two that, main things. <laughs> yeah, let's say there's that, that's a lot. There's a lot to cover, but we'll we'll move on to the uh, the other thing. That's your yes. uh, neck of the woods. So, uh, Horizon. Uh, it's funny. I talk about you know 3D open world games being feeling stale, and then we move on. Oh, to they're 3D so open annoying. World. But this other one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit here. So, uh, PlayStation has State of Play that released uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which is the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn which was actually a game that was overshadowed when it was originally released by Breath of the Wild because it came out around the same time. Did it? Yes. Yes, it did. Uh, it came out oh. al almost like within like within months of each other or within the same year at least. Um, and like, like here, let me double check here just to uh, make sure because obviously Breath of the Wild came out in October when the Switch was released, right? Uh, uh, yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn. And Zero Dawn came out in... 2017, 2017. okay. So, like, a few months later. So, a few months later. So, about three, four months later. Oh. Or, wait, did it Oh, come out? you're right. Yeah, yeah, because it was 2016 that uh, Breath of the Wild came out, right? Yeah, oh. that was uh, December... Oh, no, no, March 2017. Oh, 2017. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so we got mixed up. So, yeah, it was a month later. So, so, so yeah, Breath of the Wild came out a month after, oh no, no, like not a month, like four days yeah, yeah, <laughs> after exactly. Horizon. So that it was, you know, people were oh, super, super, super hyped for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and it just like completely and obliterately overshadowed, um, 
horizon. Uh, horizon completely. It co- completely eclipsed it. And so I think that th- that's the reason why they are not releasing a release date yet, because I think that they're going to wait to see when the sequel to Breath of the Wild is going to be released, and then they'll give a release date to Horizon Zero uh, Forbidden West, because... Um, it, it's yeah, they just, don't want to. They don't want to do that again. <laughs> uh, like the game still sold very well and did like critically well, but it's just that you know Zelda just overshadowed yeah, it. Yeah, the people were talking about Zelda. They weren't talking right. about Horizon. Exactly, exactly. So, I'm a big fan of Horizon Zero Dawn. I loved Horizon Zero Dawn. It is an open world game that changes its environments constantly, and that's one of the reasons why I loved it. Is that while there are sections that are like similar like okay you got like a snowy section you got like a tropical section there were subsections within those sections that were very diverse right and that were very well done very good and even you could tell where you were even within your own subsection if you were familiar with the game now Horizon Zero Dawn came at a time for me where uh, I had <laughs> I had no money. <laughs> I <Yeah>. was <laughs> I had no money. Uh, I had uh, I was barely holding on for a job. Um, I had almost nothing, and I had set aside forty dollars, forty five dollars for myself to be able to get a game. And the game was just released, and I was trying to find a used copy. That's all. I, I and I searched for. It was February it came out. I probably looked until the summer until I found a used copy, right? Like, Good Lord. It took so long because every single time a used copy came in, gone, gone, gone. Yeah, understandable, yeah. So I uh, I got a, finally got a used copy from <clears throat> a friend that ran a used video game store, and he set it aside for me because he knew I was looking for it, and he got it, and he held it aside, and he knew I only had 45 bucks, and he gave it to me for 45 bucks. And I was so happy because, like I said, I was had nothing. And so Horizon Zero Dawn was so much fun for me. I loved it. I enjoyed it. So you can guess how excited I was when they announced Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. Uh, it Now, they released 14 minutes. They gave it a dedicated state of play, which some people were in, curious. Like, why didn't you wait till E3? Why didn't you wait to a state of play that you would release close to E3? And I think I know the reason why, because actually Kingdom Wayfinder pointed it out. It's because um, Horizon Forbidden West is also coming to PS4 as well. Is so, it? Yes. I thought it was. No. Wow. Okay. I, uh, I'm not sure if I should be concerned or not. That, that uh, is a concern of mine. There is a concern. I, that, I share yeah, your concern. We'll get to it's that. It's like that. Like that. That reminds me because last topic. My yeah. my coworker actually brought this up yesterday. Um, he he said it's a shame that we'll probably never get a game to look as good as Sonic Unleashed because of the Switch. Because the fact that they have to put these games on the Switch, meaning yeah. it's holding back its graphical output. Because Unleashed was PS3 360. Like, both of them share the same power, so both of them mm-hmm. can look really good. But it's like PS5, Xbox Series X, and then the Switch. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to pull back on this. And I'm wondering how hard they're going to have to pull back for uh, Horizon. Because Spider Man Miles, like. Mm-hmm. It it looked and ran good, but on the PS5, it's like okay, this is a this is clearly a PS4 game. Like yeah, I, like it, it runs so well because it's not a PS5 game; it's a PS4 game with an unlocked frame rate on the PS5. Yeah, yeah no, no, definitely. Like, Miles still looks good though; like it still looks good, but you can definitely see where it, it starts to fall apart is when you look at the civilians walking around. Yeah, that's where you start to see like, all right, this is starting to look back to the P- PS4 ish. Um, and some of the shadows, some of the, some odd animations here and there. It's still a very good game, Miles Morales. Still a very, very good game, but definitely not the peak of the PlayStation 4, 5, right? Definitely not PlayStation 5 peak at all. Yeah. And this is where... So, Horizon... So, let, let's get back to the footage, and then we'll talk about some of my uh, happiness and concerns. So... As a massive fan of this game, I absolutely love the 14-minute showcase that they gave. And I am I do agree with Kingdom Wayfinder in him saying that the reason why they probably gave it its own 14-minute state of play was that because PlayStation wants to probably show off exclusive PlayStation 5 games at E3. Probably like, hey, all these games are PS5 exclusive. 
Uh, they already announced, actually already announced in a, a, a conference call that the next God of War sequel is going to be a PS5 exclusive only. So, uh, basically, the biggest thing that I'm concerned... Oops, sorry. The biggest thing that I'm concerned about... Uh, the biggest thing that makes me happy about this game is <clears throat> it's still holding true to the original Horizon Zero Dawn, right? Yes, it's, I agree. It, it it's still it's still the same game, but you can tell that they polished a lot of it up, like not just a little bit. They polished. They didn't just copy and paste the game and then could make a new story. They added a whole bunch of new weapons. They added a whole bunch of new mechanics. They actually added a paraglide thing. And it looks for Breath of the Wild. Oh, um, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Right. Um, then they also added like a uh, what was really cool is that they added like this. It's almost like a hook, like a, a zip line hook shot almost where there are areas. That's where, cool. Yes. Where areas where uh, she can climb. And then she as she's jumping and climbing, she can hook shot the wall and zing herself to the wall and then paraglide down. So and she like launch herself off like parkour style and then activate the para parasail and go down. Um, so you can see the action sequences are a lot faster. Um, the character modeling, it's entering Uncanny Valley. We're getting to that yeah. point where, like, when you're watching the trailer, where your eyes rest, you if you look at the, per like, it's weird. When you look at Aloy, you can see the actresses, all the actresses' flaws. Like, you can see the wrinkles. Damn. You can see the, hmm. you can see where the jawline is. Like, when she... Like when she's concerned, you can actually see like her jawline tighten a little bit. Like if you look in slow mo, you can see the muscles move in the face. It's <laughs> it's so what's funny is is that if you rest your eyes on her face in motion, you start you're like, is this a real? You start entering uncanny valley, and then when search she turns and it's like, okay, then it looks like a video game again. We're entering that uncanny valley situation now. <laughs> Do you remember whenever we did the Wumpa time for when the Xbox Series X was announced and we both were like, yeah, when they did the Hellblade 2 trailer, we thought it was a real person and then it wasn't. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's what that's reminding me of. Yeah. Now, is it on the on that level of Senwa's uh, trailer? No, but Senwa's trailer no, 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 was no. CGI, right? That's yeah. the thing is that Senwa's trailer was CGI. Um but the fact that it was uh, the, the Hellblade Two could look like that, like the, like the CGI looks just like that. That's that that is still like one of the best like cases of CGI that I've seen. Is still Senwa as uh, the second uh, Senwa Two. That yeah. is just like that is mind boggling. Coming it, from a VFX artist, that's that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that that is like I've seen some awesome VFX stuff. I've seen some like in like behind the scenes and how we and how it's built and stuff. I've seen subtle changes that people would never be able to ever see and that I never would have guessed until I saw the before and after. I've seen entire like characters imported into backgrounds that weren't there that <clears throat> looked naturally there and I've never seen a 3D render look that good. Never. <laughs> it, it's 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 good. It's good. So, but Horizon Forbidden West it looks really good and there has already been some critiques online which I personally don't understand. Uh, the first one was that people are saying, oh, uh, why does Aloy look ugly? And I'm like, yeah, that, that's what got me. Like, she looks the same. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. She looks the same. Yeah. I'm like, she just looks. I don't understand what do you mean. She looks ugly. I'm like, they're like, oh, she looks fatter. She looks chunkier. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't I don't understand. Like, no, like the th and the thing is that there, there's a certain there's a certain angle of Aloy, like one screenshot that people are using to prove how uh, fat she is. And I'm like, yeah, but that's how faces work. Like there yeah, is uh, skin morphs. Yeah, yeah. Like there are there. You ever hear the saying, "Oh, make sure you catch my good side when you're taking an image." Yeah, that's, everyone has a bad side. Everyone has a bad side. You know, it, t like take your phone, uh, go take it to selfie mode, put it right in line with your face, see how good you look. Now put that same phone and put it down below your chin and take a photo and tell me how good you look. <laughs> it's, you, hey, hey, hmm. it's, 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 it's not good. When you take a photo from below, it, it don't look good. It don't look good. And then as the higher you go, the better it looks. Take a look at my good I, side. That's literally still, it. I still stand by the statement I told you. Uh, real gamers have never seen a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then on top of that, on top of that, it, this should be more of a compliment to the PlayStation 5. People are like, why does Aloy have peach fuzz on her face? 
And I'm like, yeah, like, <laughs> dude, that is a huge accomplishment that you're just <laughs> overlooking. Like, oh, why does she have peach fuzz? That's disgusting. Meanwhile, we're, we're over here like, she has peach fuzz? That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. Because women have peach fuzz on their faces. That's a Can normal we- thing. <laughs> That's I can't wait normal. for the graphics comparison where it's like PS4 versus PS5. PS4 has no peach fuzz. Oh, ew, I hate it. PS5 <laughs> has peach fuzz. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> so, the, the, the people saying that Aloy looks ugly, no. No, it's... No. No, you don't... Like, if you turn around, you're like, oh, she has peach fuzz on her face. And they're like, oh, is she, is she a man? Is she? I'm like, guys, are you serious? Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> like, come on. You don't... Uh, come on, why are you going there? So uh, they're still keeping to the theme of having like almost like dinosaur like um, uh, creatures. We saw a new creature in uh, we saw uh, two new creature three. We saw very uh, uh, actually technically four, but it's hard to see. So there was if you look in the sky, there was pterodactyls, uh, but th- they were far to see. They had like these platypus beaver ones that were <laughs> small and cute. Then they introduced a raptor. Uh, a chainsaw okay. raptor. Like its teeth okay. were chainsaws. <laughs> Immediately got more cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A chainsaw raptor. And then they introduced um laser shooting uh mammoth. And uh one of the things that the game has, which is really cool, now you've heard of dynamic tracks, right? Uh vaguely. Well, you know, like like you know, Spyro, like dynamic, like you like when you stand oh, still, oh, everything. Oh, music tracks. Yeah, 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 music yeah. I thought tracks, you were talking yeah. about something else. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. So you've heard of uh dynamic music tracks. They have that in Horizon Zero Dawn when you're fighting the mammoth. There's this really if you go back and if you go and listen, there's uh like this music, it sounds like war music, and then when the mammoth fires the lasers, it actually has like this dubstep like um sound effect if you're within range of it if you're out of range you don't hear it but then when you're in it as the lasers are passing through you because it shoots it in the waves of three if you're standing in between the spaces in between it goes from like war music to like and then it, as soon as it that's passes, cool it's really cool so it's like as the characters are attacking the music changes depending on the type of attacks that they use and I'm just like, that is super cool. If you look at the mammoth running through sand, all the attacks and all of its moves interact correctly, like, which is a super dorky thing. The water reacts like when it stomps, the water actually like repositions and then like hits like a tide almost because, you know, like if you're um, if you're nearby water and something big and heavy lands near it, the tide will actually like adjust, like it'll stutter the tide a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Almost like yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like like the tide's going in and out, in and out, and then all of a sudden it's going in, and then the mammoth stut- slams, and halfway through the tide it pulls back and then comes in heavier. So it's like these really intricate details that are being achieved on the PlayStation Five that is super super cool. That I'm like, uh, let's just let's just say I am. Uh, very excited to see this game run on the base PS4. <laughs> yes, this is where we get to the to the, to the concerns. Um, I don't see how this game is going to be able to perform overly well on the PS4. I don't. Uh. <laughs> no. Um, is it is it sixty on the PS5? Do we know is it sixty FPS? Uh, it's four K. Yeah, I think it's sixty. I think it's four K sixty. Okay. So, so I'm wondering if they I'm wondering if they had to do what they did with Miles, where they just did a. They 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 started a PS4 Pro with they started with the PS4 Pro in mind and then they just upgraded it for the five because I, I told you one of my biggest like realizations was that they kept advertising Miles Morales on the PS5 as it has no load times you can go from inside to outside with no load times and everyone was hmm. like wow that's so cool but I didn't get a PS5 right away I had to play it on PS4 and color me surprised when that happens on the PS4 there's no load yeah. times you go from inside to outside and that's it and not once in the game did it have to load which was very very weird so yeah. I'm wondering if they found a way to do this technology on the PS4 uh, regardless if it's the pro or the base or whatever, and then they just put it on the PS5 and it happens to be 4K60 because it can handle that. Right. But I, I just don't know what they prioritized. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure. Now, I, I, I might be incorrect. It might be 4K30 and then for, uh, 1080p60 or 1440p60. I don't know. 
Uh, I'm not yeah. 100% sure, but it looked like when they uploaded the... Because uh, when we watched the gameplay live, it was 1080p 30. But then when they uploaded the 4K, it looked like it was 60. Um, now, I don't know. I'm not sure because, yes, yeah, streaming uh, streaming uh, 60 frames can be a pain in the butt sometimes. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sh- uh, sure the actual resolution and such. But I'm, I am, I have a big concern for Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West on. Now, granted, it is running on arguably one of the most well-optimized engines, which is the Decima engine. Um, yes, yeah, hundred percent. Yes, which is a huge, huge, like a, a powerful engine and very not even uh, uh, the yes, it's powerful, but it's more of how intelligently optimized it is and how well it's set up. Um, that they might be able to get away with some pretty crazy features for the PS4, but it's probably going to be 1080p 30 with frame dips. I don't think, and and I don't think that they're going to be able to get even close to the quality that they have. Yeah. On. There's, there's going to have to be a lot of drawbacks, but here's my issue is that because it's being crafted for the PS4 as well, they can't optimize that SSD to its full capability. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, like it's, there's, there's no way they can get that going. Yeah. There's no way. And the reason why is because it, the, if so, for example, like Ratchet and Clank is using the SSD as part of a mechanic in the game, which is you warping to different levels. Right. And it's yeah. like these in, new levels are loading instantaneously <clears throat> and they're not like recycled either. They're not like, Oh, it's the same area, but adjusted. It's like completely different worlds. Like the world is not even close to the same. And at different creatures, different assets. And that's what they're, and they're using that as a mechanic, which is very smart. Unfortunately, Horizon Zero Dawn is only going to be able to benefit from faster load times, but they won't be able to make any mechanics that can use that SSD. Like imagine there being a mechanic where like, like let's just say if they won the turn, like, okay, Aloy can create this zip line that allows her to zip across the world and in instant speeds almost. The PS4, yeah. wouldn't, the PS4 wouldn't be able to handle that. The PS4 would explode. <laughs> it would just... Fit, but yeah, you're right. Right? Because it, it can't handle it. It literally cannot handle it. And that's a problem. That's an issue. And I am scared it's going to be held back. But we'll see. Um, we I, I don't know. Uh, I am very excited, though. And if uh, you get the chance, Shemp, go take a look at some of the, the gameplay. The gameplay is really... It's good. It's really good. They added some underwater stuff. They added underwater. Uh, they even added like currents. It's like when you're swimming and then it's like there's a strong current. You have to like jump through it and otherwise you'll get carried away. Uh, the That's under- cool. The underlife, the underworld sea life is really pretty. Uh, it's it's really interesting. And I think that uh, you'll definitely get a kick out of it. So but uh, that's all the time we have for today, Shemp. Um, that it, is. It is. Um, you know, we, we could, I mean, you and I, we can talk for hours and hours and hours on end. And uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we, I mean, we even gone over time on this uh, episode. So um, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, make sure to leave a review on whichever podcast service you're listening to, whether it would be um, uh, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube's, uh, whether it, the YouTube's, it, the YouTube's, uh, whether it be SoundCloud, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever service that you use, um, let us know if you enjoyed the episode with the rating system that you have there, access to whichever one you're on. Um, if you are enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe to Canadian Guy and also Shemp Official. He makes some, oh. he makes, uh, or he makes some awesome. Uh, a game collecting videos, Sonic, a Crash. He does great content and uh, funny too, uh, which is something that is hard to find nowadays. Uh, on top of that, you can go follow us on Twitter, which is at Canadian Guy with the extra H. Still trying to find the imposter, and <laughs> also at Shimp Official. And uh, hopefully, when uh, what we might start doing, just an idea is that we might start o- uh, opening maybe some fan mail or whatever if uh, the, these borders open up for uh <laughs> you know from the pandemic so maybe we'll get something set up and uh, i think that'd be super cool do you, do you agree i agree yeah that'd be really cool and then we can get official carrier pigeons in the shape of ups package guys so <laughs> uh is that everything is there anything else no that is everything okay thank you so much for listening and we'll see you guys next time bye bye three two